everyone, my name is Amy Dallin and this is my Geek and Sundry vlog, Talkin' Comics, where every two weeks we talk a little bit about the many joys of comic books. But of course, joy is not the only thing we find in comics. Just as often, we are confronted with terror. And so, in honor of this month's Halloween holiday, I thought we would focus today on one of the great horror icons in comic books. This is a story of rebirth, of transformation, of genius, and the miraculous mixture of elements that would combine to produce something both timeless and brand new, something powerful, disturbing, and profound. This is the story of Swamp Thing. This particular book that I'm holding up is the Alan Moore written run on Swamp Thing, which ran from 1983 ish to 1987. It is considered by many to be not only the best run on Swamp Thing, but one of the greatest comics ever created. I'm not kidding. Alan Moore, as you may have heard, is a genius, a fact of which he is rather famously not unaware. So while he didn't create the character, his is the run to start with. It was his very first work for DC Comics. He had already started making a name for himself in British weeklies like 2000 AD and Warrior Magazine. But that aside, aside, we're not here to talk about this one. We are here to talk about where it came from. If you will, the roots of the Swamp Thing. Swamp Thing was created by writer Len Wein and artist Bernie Wrightson. For more of that story, I will take you to this introduction that opens this volume of Swamp Thing, written by Len Wein. In the autumn of 1970, I was living in Levittown, New York, and writing short mystery stories for the always amiable Joe Orlando, editor of such spine-chilling titles as The House of Mystery and The House of Secrets. I was on the subway, heading for one of my then-weekly meetings with Joe, when I realized I had nothing to pitch him. No story ideas. Nothing. Desperate professional that I was, by the time I reached the office I had concocted a little period piece. A tale of a scientist murdered by his jealous best friend, then resurrected by the swamp his body was left to rot in so he could seek his revenge. To this day, if my life depended on my telling you where the idea came from on such short notice, you'd have no choice but to put me up against a wall and hand me a blindfold. Still, Joe eagerly bought the idea and I quickly went to work. I kept referring to the story as that swamp thing I'm working on. And when the time came to find a title, the name just stuck. Swamp Thing it was. At a party that month, I asked my old buddy and budding young superstar artist, Bernie Wrightson, if he'd be willing to draw the story, and was gratified when he said he was in. We were off and running. So the short story was great. The anthology they appeared in sold like gangbusters, and naturally, editorial said, Green light. Make this an ongoing. But the problem was, it was just a short story. Lenwein and Bernie Retton didn't really have any place to go from there. They liked it the way it was. So it took them a little while, but they hit on something eventually. They would keep a lot of the elements that made the story work, but also reinvent it, give them a new story to tell. So the main character is still a murdered scientist, but his name is now Dr. Alec Holland. And his wife, Linda, is now Dr. Linda Holland, his collaborator and co-creator of a bio-restorative formula that has the power to transform whole ecologies. It's such an important piece of biochemistry that the government has them hidden away in a barn in the swamp where enemy agents won't be able to find them and potentially steal the formula. But some shady characters do find them, and they make Alec an offer that he and Linda really would like to refuse. They try to buy the formula from them. When they refuse, they decide if they, the shady ones, can't have it, no one can. They sabotaged Alec Holland's lab, and it explodes, coating him in a mixture of crazy chemicals, including his bio-restorative formula. And he goes plunging out of the flaming barn and collapses into the swamp. The shady characters then go on to murder Dr. Linda Holland, but they just go ahead and shoot her and leave her for dead. And that would be the end of the story, except that that tragedy was only the beginning. For where Alec Holland crashed into that swamp coated in his weird chemical cocktail, something came back out. Something that was not quite a man, not quite a monster. 
That is the new origin that Len, Wein, and Bernie writes and settled on for their swamp thing. And they went on to have a really, really great run. It was only 10 issues, but the book came out every other month. So that was about two years that Wein and Wrightson collaborated on this. Oh, and for the record, if you're keeping score at home, that means that the very first people to go back and completely change the origin of the swamp thing were the co-creators of the swamp thing. For an excellent account of just how great it was, I will turn to this awesome reprinting of those original stories that came out at the height of Alan Moore's run. There's an essay in the back of this one that has a great account of the impact of those original 1972 to 1974-ish Ween writes and stories. Len Ween's first dozen or so issues of Swamp Thing remain for me amongst the very first comic books I ever read that made any attempt at poetry. There was a skill with which he manipulated the familiar icons of Universal Film's horror landscape and an ability to craft tight, dark plots that gave his language a firm and solid setting in which to shine. There was substance as well as surface. The crucified swamp creature being carried down a subterranean river on a raft full of deformed circus grotesques in the very first arcane story. Or the mute and simple-minded boy playing with his flowers in The Last of the Ravenswind Witches. All of these scenarios had a dark charm and a force that made the writing in Swamp Thing the most distinctive, personal, and affecting writing of its day. I feel confident that the writing alone would have elevated it to a position far above the herd. As it was, however, Swamp Thing had Bernie Wrightson to bring Ween's words to life and we were doubly blessed. No more perfect choice than Wrightson could have been made to complement the lush, saturnine texture of the writing. Bernie's work back then showed a promise and accomplishment far beyond his years in the industry, boiling down the essence of the old EC horror artists and infusing it with a sense of the classical that obviously drew its inspiration from work far outside the confines of the comic field. To sum up, with their windswept heaths in the grip of autumn and their tottering and decayed European castles, Wrightson's landscapes helped to establish a visual poetry for the book that precisely complemented what Wien was doing with the words and in many ways added to it. Together with their respective visions in obvious synchronization, writer and artist crafted something unique and unprecedented. But alas, no great thing lasts forever. After those nearly two years, Bernie Wrightson was ready to move on to other projects. And not long after that, Len Wein got stolen away over to the <clears throat> Marvel side of things, where he spent some time creating Wolverine and writing an incredibly important issue of the X-Men called Second Genesis, which is kind of weird because the first Swamp Thing ongoing issue was called Dark Genesis, and Second Genesis has an island that eats people that's kind of alive and creepy crossover. The issues following the collaboration of Ween and Wrightson had some really cool stories in them, but nothing was ever quite able to capture the, shall we say, chemistry of that first combination, and at issue 24 that book ended, and so it might have remained had it not been for a little guy called Wes Craven. Craven, it turns out, wanted to make a Swamp Thing movie. Note of trivia, I have not seen the Swamp Thing movie, but I do know someone who has. He was a little British kid named Paul Grimshaw, and he grew up and started a comic book store and hired me and handed me Alan Moore's Swamp Thing. Full circle! Now DC Editorial very sensibly decided that if there was going to be a Swamp Thing movie out based on the comics, they should probably be making some Swamp Thing comics. But by this time, Len Wein had crossed to the other side of the pencil? He was an editor. The original band had broken up, but Len Wein agreed to edit the new series. So now he's Joe Orlando from his story that you heard before. Full circle again. But now he has the job of deciding who will write this new incarnation of Swamp Thing. His first choice is a writer named Martin Pasco, who for the first year and a half or so wrote some sort of fine Swamp Thing stories in my opinion. But eventually he too was moving on, and then it was Len's job to decide who was going to take on the mantle of this character, who meant kind of a lot. For a reminder of just how much, we return to this awesome essay. Back then, according to this editorial, books were important for the ground that they broke open, for their influence on the works that came after them, and because they gave those of us who took our comics seriously something that we could hold up in public and say, here. This is what comic books are all about. The few books that managed to fill these criteria gained a very special niche in the hearts of the comic Kanyashenti 
And Swamp Thing was right up there with the best of them. The impact of Swamp Thing was staggering. So much so, in fact, that almost every attempt at the character since the tenure of its original creators has been met with a critical disdain that is almost reflexive. You can imagine how the writer of these words felt when he heard that this all-important job was going to be handed to, quote, a plucky, gap-toothed youngster with a quaint accent from the terraced back streets of Northampton. That's right. Alan Moore just referred to himself as plucky. Oh yeah, did I mention that this whole love letter to the impossible standard set by the original Swamp Thing creators is by a 1986 Alan Moore? That little fact might go some way towards explaining what happened next. Len Wein, faced with this impossible replacement challenge, has settled on an option. The guy's name, he says, was Alan Moore. I no longer recall how I got hold of Alan's phone number, but I rang him up, as they say over there, and introduced myself. Alan promptly hung up on me. And that, lovely viewers, is what this vlog is going to call a cliffhanger. Please tune in next time as we will find out what exactly happens next, give Alan a chance to defend his phone etiquette, and talk a little bit more about the legacy of this amazing character. In the meantime, I would love to hear what are your favorite horror stories? What is your favorite part of Swamp Thing? What is your favorite comic to get you in that Halloween mood? If you enjoyed this introductory primer to the saga of the Swamp Thing, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, tune in next time, and check out all of the other vloggers. If you're in the mood for monsters, Dale Kingsmill just did an awesome mythology post about monsters in Greek mythology. And if you just like things that are amazing, I just found out that Songs of Adventure now have downloadable tracks to go with their covers of video game music. So please check them out. Enjoy your Halloween season. I'll see you back in two weeks. And in the meantime, read yourself some comics.